guys, welcome back to Trap Resort. If you catch something in your live cage trap or any trap, so there's a squirrel and you decide to dispatch it, what are you going to do with the squirrel? You just want to throw it out? I wouldn't do that. You can make it very useful by collecting its fur, which can sell up to $6 a piece. And too bad. Alright, so what you're going to need to do this, you're going to need three nails and a tree. Some paracord, maybe a foot and a half to two feet, and of course, a knife. Now, if you're a ger germaphobe and you're scared to touch this animal, you can wear gloves. I'm not. And then you can spray it down the Lysol to get rid of the bacteria. It's no grosser than petting a dog. And so, I mean, you don't really need them, but if you're really a germaphobe, you can have a glove. It's not that big of a deal. All right, so here we go. Let's get started. I'm going to show you how to clean this fellow up. Your squirrel, your paracord. As you can see, just like us, made of foot. So tie it right there by the ankle of the foot. Give it a good knot, tie it around right here. Yes, this is going to creep you out, but yes, I'm going to put my mouth on this and tighten it. I don't mind bacteria. Okay. Yes, I just had the squirrel claw in my, in my mouth. Delicious. Tie it two times at least. Three would be even more smart. Notice a normal knot that you would do when you're tying your shoes. Alright, make sure it holds. Good. Do the same thing with the other foot. You will get blood on you from doing this. So. Like I said, if you're a germaphobe, you're going to want to wear gloves. I'm not, so I don't really care. Oh, just lost it. Redo this knot here now. Messed up. This is a pretty decent sized squirrel, so walked up and through the squirrel's ramp of snares. It's a, a log that goes up a tree and you set snares on it so when it runs up the tree it gets stuck in the snare. And then I took my 17 caliber BB gun, pellet gun, and uh, shot it. And there he is now. It's the best way to dispatch of a squirrel. Right in the head. Right in the head. You can see right there. so far. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my knife, get my sharpener, and we sharpen this real fast. Let me lower the camera for you so you can see the body better. All right. So what you're going to do, you're going to go around right here, around the foot, make a little circle, and you should be able to see the meat once you do that. See, it's opening up right there. So you put your knife right here, you in. Get into the flesh and then the high here. And cut. Cut, cut. Just cut all the way to the other side of the leg. Go through the anus. And this goes up here. There you go. Now you should have this line from one leg to another leg. So now what you're going to do, you're going to open up the hide from the meat, and you're going to slowly separate that from the leg. And that's going to take a while. Especially if it's a bigger animal, such as a deer, rat king, or something else that is a fur bearer. So you keep doing this around here. Keep 
separating the high from the meat. I actually keep the meat, so food meat ain't too bad. You like you like chicken, you're gonna like squirrel. Don't worry about getting some holes in it, alright? Will it lessen the value? More than likely, yes. But if it's your first squirrel, just be proud that you did. As you can see, I almost got this entire leg that covered. I'm done. We'll do the same thing with the other leg. Let's separate the meat from the hide. You will get fur on him. You will eventually get blood. You just got a man up, or a female's case, a woman up. Get this done. Can't back bros. Could you not? You think it'd be gross, but it's not. Can't be bad. Keep cutting through the hide. Okay. Now that I have both of the legs done now, I'm going to cut down from the belly now. Do the same thing. Same out, same out. Now what happens when you haven't done the back? Well, you can take it out, turn it around, and look at this side. And do it. Not too hard. Now you got to separate the back side. Your girl is get as little meat and fat as you can on the hide. You do not want fat on there. Hope to decay faster. Professional trappers use something called a skin and knife for cleaning a squirrel, which is personally the best knife you can use for a taxidermy or skinning. It's an skinny knife up. Oh, one of these came loose. If that happens, like I just did in my case, you just undo the knot, put it right back on. Put my knife down so I don't cut myself and get affection. I failed to mention if you have like a cut in your hand, wear gloves because you don't want that bacteria getting into you. Yeah. Is it really that is it really that dangerous? No. But let's say fur gets in your cut and just stays there, you know, it's not good. Alright. Show that right back on there. Okay, continue cutting. Now when you get to the tail, you can actually separate the tail bone from the rest of the body and just leave that there. We'll worry about that in a second. If you cannot get the tail off, that's okay. The tail, you can, you don't even have to use it to keep the tail. Will that lessen the value? Yes, it will. But if it's your first time doing this, that's okay. You're not going to believe me, I find this very fun. So, I mean, you should seriously try it. It's very enjoyable. I always like to enjoy God's creation and use his animals for cool purposes. Of course, one of my favorites for smaller animals is squirrels and chipmunks. And it's turning their hide into a bookmark. That's my favorite. But the same thing, the 
Just keep going. So for the eye from the meat. Just keep going, and once you get down to the hands, you do the same thing to the hands that you did to the feet. You're not quite there yet. And so for sake of your time, I'm going to turn off the camera, and once I get down back to the hands, I'll restart back up. Alright, I'm now down to the arms. It's pretty much the same thing with the legs, minus we do not cut. In the same area, we do not cut the arms like that. We do you know, just get off the foot. But right here, the skin's going to get tighter because his hands are now stiff. We do the hide. Turn this around. the head right there. We do the head and the arms pretty much at the same time. Now if you want you can actually tuck down a little bit and it should just come right off. Look at that. See, See there's blood right there because that's where I shot him at in the head. Bullet sticking out right there. The bullet. 17 caliber pellet bullet. You don't have an air gun, you need to get one. They're really good for small game hunting, they're really great for beginners and young ones to learn how to learn that great art of the outdoors. Man. It's, it's just amazing. Seriously. Like you're getting some air guns. They're cheap too. Compared to real guns. And the head. Now, as we're still on the arms a little bit, we'll be going to the head here in a second. Some people do not want the head because it has blood on it. That's okay. You can just cut the head right off. Yes, there's going to be blood. It's probably one of the bloodiest part. But you just want to suck it up and deal with it. Okay. Pull down a little bit. Oh, I heard that his lungs blew up there. Oh, it cut into its arm a little bit. There's the arm right here. And this is a little bit. Don't cut into the meat like I just did. Try your hardest not to do that. Especially if you plan on keeping the meat. Alright. I'm actually going to poke a hole right here in its muscle. And it's fat. Poke a hole. This part most people don't like, but suck it up and deal with it. Put your finger in that hole and pull that hand out. See how I'm doing that? Pulling out the arm. There it is. Yeah. There you go. Careful, don't call yourself. I got one arm out. I'm going to do the same thing with the next arm. Turn it back around. Okay. Put a hole again in the arm. Make sure it goes through. Careful not to put a hole to the hide. I did that when I first started. So it's kind of a mistake you can do. On your first try. Put a hole to hide. Alright, put the 
hand out. Both hands are now out. Now I want to get the head. Now if you don't want to use the head because it has blood on it, you can quit now and just chop off the head. But I want to keep going. At least try to. Now I'm just separating the hide. Now this part's going to be a little bit more gross than the rest because, like I said, there's a lot more blood. And I'm just going to suck it up and deal with it. You see, look at all that blood. Lots of blood because we have to reshot it out. A lot of people actually like the heck, it's pretty nice actually to have with your hide. We'll turn it around. Won't pull down a little. Now if it's too buggy like mine, you can't really see too much, so you're gonna, obviously you're gonna have to guess sadly. Let's try and just go for it, I just watch more blood come out. It's gross, I'm telling you what. It is gross. So you just cut to the ear a little bit. Get some blood off. Ugh. Some people actually hit the animal in the head with a stick and knock them out. And hit it again just to be sure it's dead. So you don't have to worry about the blood. I mean, you might have a little still. But, um, it's a little less humane. There's its eye. I'm getting to the eye. You just cut around the eye. Cut around the eye. Some people actually like to keep the eyes. Really weird if you ask me. I don't. I actually keep the skull sometimes for its dumb. It's pretty nice to have. Now when you when you catch it in a live cage trap, obviously you're not going to be able to hit it in the head. So um, a gun is the only way to go. Some people, um, a friend of mine, actually he traps raccoons with a live cage trap and he drowns it in a trash can. Fills up the trash can with water and just leaves it in there for about 10 minutes. And just drowns it. And he is not outdoors, <laughs> let me tell you, but it's actually pretty smart. Almost done here. But most it's very bloody, like I said, if you shoot it. I'm at, I'm at the mouth now. Alright. Very tail in. Getting it off. Alright, here we go. Mind the blood. The head is the most easiest part to mess up in. So, don't worry about messing up. It's your first time. I'm happy for you that you give me an effort. I'm going to turn it around. Got blood, blood in my hand. Don't touch your clothing. Almost there. Get the blood off. You can wash it off. I have been able to do that. Sometimes I just leave it on there. I don't mind that much. I actually don't sell most of my fur. I keep it because I kind of like it to have it. Alright, we are done. Alright, there's the carcass. I'm actually going to leave that there because I'm going to clean it up and eat it. Alright, let's focus on now the pelt. Look at that nice little hide right there. Beautiful. I'm going to turn it inside out so you guys can see what it looks like. It's going to be a nice fur, I'm going to tell you. It's nice. Blood on it, but that's okay. I can handle a little blood. Look at that nice thing. Now we still have the tail to do. Some people actually just leave the tailbone in there. Um, I don't know what I have to say to that, but I would not recommend doing it. What you do, you just push that tailbone out best you can if you lose the tail the tail comes off that's okay sometimes you can use pliers which I don't have any on me right now normally I do 
so that I can just separate the tail, the tail meat. Now that I got the tailbone out, or at least most of it, if you cut off the tailbone, like you mess up and some of it's still in the tail, it's not that big of a deal. It hardly, it hardly has any meat on it, and so uh, you don't have to worry about that. Just leave it in there. I'll show you, we're going to preserve this so it doesn't run away. And so I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. So now your objective is to remove all the meat and fat as you can from the hide. Like you see that big old hunk of meat right there. So your goal right now when you clean up your animal is to get off all this meat that you can. This is when the fleshy knife comes in handy. The fleshy knife is designed to get all the crap off the hide. All off, see, it's coming off. Take a little bit, it takes time. All that meat off, keep that for bait. Catch a bigger animal, such as fox and stuff. I'm sorry, it's hard to see on this camera. It's uh, quite sunny out today, it's a beautiful day. Good day for trapping. Shooting about 10 squirrels in my backyard, which is nice, if you're a squirrel trapper, but we have about 20 acres of woods behind my house, and I like to go back there and trap a lot of animals. Fox and kitten. So I got this, trying to get this fat off, and so, get it all off. So once you get all that fat off, I got most of it off. What you're trying to do, you get it all off one so it doesn't smell bad later on, and two to help it be preserved longer. And so, I would strive to try to at least get 75% of the fat off. If you can't get all the little tiny pieces off, that's quite okay. Now the blood, are you going to worry about the blood? No you're not, because this is going to be inside out once you hang it up in your room or sell it. Now if you sell it, it won't be as valuable because it's not clean completely, but as a beginner you don't have to uh, worry about that. So what you're going to do now, you're going to look for a stick that is very flexible. All right? So I'm going to go and find one. Just pull it out, cut it off a branch. There you go. I'm going to go find one. I can show it to you and how, what to do with that in a second. Alright, I got my stick. Make sure it's flexible. You do not want it to break on you when you push it onto it. I recommend getting it from a sapling. Not a honeysuckle, but any other tree. So what you do, you can use your knees. Hopefully you can see me here. I push it like that. Just push it. Hopefully it won't tear on me. You just push it in. So you just slide the stick in. It's called a stretcher. You can buy these online actually. Uh, they're made out of metal. And they're easier to use than a stick. But if you're a beginner, like I said, it's a good idea just to start off with a stick. Now, as you can see, it's more stretched out now. Alright. And so. If you see more fat on it, because it's stretched out, it's more easy to see. And it's easier to get off. And so, start doing that now if you see more fat. Hopefully you got most of it off already, but it never hurts. Do this. Now, the only danger about putting it on a stretcher is it's easier to put a hole in it while getting off all the fat. As you can see, I've already done it from doing it down there without the stretcher. But, you just have to be aware of that stuff. Alright. So there it is. It's head, it's floppy, don't worry about that. Here's its tail, and now we're going to talk about the preserving part. As you can already see, i got quite a few things right now in the process of preserving. Just finished up a fox, now I have a rabbit right there, and another squirrel right there, using a stick as well. So what you're going to do, you're going to get soft. What kind of soft? non iodide soft, alright? You don't want table salt, you want non idea dad. Alright? Get this at Kroger for like 50 cents. I mean, you can afford that. What you do, you open it up. Don't have long fingernails, so you use your knife to open up the lid. There you go. What I'm going to do is sprinkle some salt on there. Try not to lose too much of it. Lose it, excuse me, not use. 
spread it around. There you go. Spread it around. Give it all into its skin. Now what you do. Watch me. Here's my stop. I'm going to put it on the ground. In my cardboard box. Right here. I'm going to saw the cardboard actually. As you can see what I'm doing right now. I drop this right over it. Over the saw. And pour the rest of the saw all over it. Get it on its tail. And just get it all over. Alright. So over that big bad boy. So that is your goal. Now what you're going to do, you're going to leave it there for a few weeks. Um, if it's raining out um, and you catch your animal and it's all wet, two weeks, two to three weeks. And then if it's not rainy, um, try a week to two weeks. And so um, just leave it there. Um, you can put more sod on it to just be sure that it does get preserved. And so there you go. That's how you clean and saw and preserve a squirrel. Hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate your views.